Today I'm going to be talking about hematopoiesis, which is the way that we produce blood, or in particular the cells that are in our blood. Just a bit of revision, what's in blood? Really there's four major things. Red cells, white cells, platelets, and they float around within plasma, which is a group of fluid along with a number of different proteins and other smaller molecules. The red cells exist to carry oxygen, and their carrying oxygen or oxygen carrying capacity is determined by the amount of hemoglobin. So rather than measuring direct red cells, we measure the total amount of hemoglobin carried in red cells because it's a more functional and practical way of measuring that part of the blood. The white cells are what makes up the majority of our immune system. So a reduction in white cells will be a reduction in your immune system. Or an excess can uh, indicate that there's something wrong at a bone marrow level where the blood products are produced. Lastly, the platelets, also known as thrombocytes, are the ones that start with primary hemostasis. So whenever you form a clot, it's the platelets that form that initial platelet plug before secondary hemostasis can cement that clot. Let's talk about a few abnormalities in blood cells. So if there are red cells, which are also known as erythrocytes, too many of them is polycythemia, literally poly, many, psi, meaning um, cells, and then themia in the blood, so too many cells in the blood. If there's too few, there's anemia, so a lack of blood, you could say. White cells are called leukocytes, so too many leukocytes is leukocytosis, not enough is leukopenia. And you can talk about specific cells of white cells being lymphocytes and neutrophils and others and apply the same kind of terminology. So neutrophilia, meaning too many or a love of neutrophils, neutropenia, not enough. A lymphocytosis, meaning lots of lymphocytes, uh, a lymphopenia, meaning not enough. Finally, the thrombocytes uh, or platelets, if there's too many, we call that thrombocytosis, so too many of those thrombocytes, or thrombocytopenia, meaning a lack of, of thrombocytes in the blood. If you have a single deficiency, they use those terms um, attributed to the specific cell type. If you have deficiencies in two cell lines, we call that a bicytopenia, so two lacks of cell types. And if you have all three affected, we call that pancytopenia, which usually should be taken very seriously. There are some key concepts with the way that blood is produced, and I wanna go through them now. The first one is progenitor cells or precursor cells. So within the bone marrow, which is found within the large bones in the body, uh, is the, the bone marrow itself is where all of the progenitor cells or the stem cells are the original ones that produce all of our uh, blood products continually. They start off as very early cells, which are stem cells which turn into blasts. Blasts are the very early cells for each of the lines of, of cells that then mature. So it's the early cells, the stem cells and the blast, that their role is proliferation. That is to replicate themselves over and over again, literally cloning themselves as they divide into two and those two into four to then allow some of those cells as they replicate to, diff to then mature into full cells that we see floating in the blood. Another concept is cell lineage. So at some point in that early phase between stem cells and blasts, the cell through different cell signaling processes is committed to a specific lineage. So for example, a red cell or erythrocyte starts as a myeloblast, but will commit to the lineage to then mature into eventually a mature red cell. Likewise, there will be some point that a lymphocyte will commit at the lymphoblast level to produce a lymphocyte and then commit to either a T or B type of lymphocyte. Um, and another example is neutrophils also start from myeloblasts as many of the um, cells in that group do and they eventually commit to that lineage of neutrophils. Differentiation is that process of choosing a cell line and committing to that point and maturation is the process of starting from an immature cell and eventually maturing into a fully functional cell. So the more mature the cell is, the less able it is to replicate and the more able it is to produce its function or, or carry out its function in the blood and the body. The whole process of choosing how many cells to replicate, how quickly they should mature and different points along the way is the process of cell regulation. So individual cell cycles and regulation of the whole bone marrow. And it's when you get disordered regulation that that can give rise to a cancerous pro process where you've deregulated uh, cell production so that they are producing way more cells than it's required, often associated with a lack of maturation or in a lack of commitment to a cell lineage. Lastly, the bone marrow requires key resources 
to produce all the cells. So even if they're getting clear signals to say, we are anemic, we need more red cells, if they don't have the basic building blocks for all those cells, they can't produce those cells. And one of the, the resources that's really common, iron, B12, folate. And, and well that, as well, with that as well is EPO, erythropoietin, um, a cytokine produced by the kidneys that tells the bone marrow you need to produce more red cells and utilize those resources. So it's a process of regulation and within that regulation are processes of internal and external signaling to trigger or suppress different cell production and the using of those resources that are made available there in the bone marrow to produce them. So it's good to think of the bone marrow very simply as a blood factory and it's a really communication centre where all the signalling internally and externally can then all come to fruition with producing the right amount of blood cells for that person at that time. Here's a picture of uh, the cell lineage and what happens in the bone marrow. You can see that all of haematology and all of the cells start as a common uh, pluripotent stem cell which then commits into the lymphoid or the myeloid progenitor stem cells and they then produce blasts at that point. And that's again a point of differentiation as they commit to a lineage, broadly myeloid versus lymphoid, and then into more specific ones as we go into erythroblasts or lymphoblasts or myeloblasts um, along the way. And then as they mature within the bone marrow, eventually they come out with the fully mature forms of red cells, platelets, and different types of white cells that you'll find in the blood. Within the bone marrow, you'll have all these precursor cells at different points of maturation. And when we find that those immature cells are floating in the blood, we know there's something wrong happening in the bone marrow, in the factory. And it's usually because the factory is being overly pushed to produce one particular type of cell and they're spilling out into the rest of the bloodstream. And that's the basics of hematopoiesis. And that's a really good start to what we'll talk about next, which is hematological malignancies.